And then what happened? And then uh, the doctor delivered lah the bad news. It's the C word, man. It's cancer. Man, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Same here, but stay positive, okay? Everything's gonna be all right. All right? What do you mean everything's gonna be all right? Hey, I'm gonna lose my hair. I'm gonna not be able to live my life anymore. You say it's all right? Hmm, that's not true. There's so many alternatives out there now. You just have to find one that is suitable for you. That's true. You did the most important part already. Detection. Now let's focus on getting you better. and disease. Arif is on a quest for informed health. Presenting My Health, My Choice. One host, 27 experts. issues in Sarawak. How lie am I supposed to know all this? How do you say like that to an older lady? You more, you more, you see more, see more lah. Phew. Eh, you okay? Hey, 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 all the diseases in the world, who doesn't treat cancer? The big C. Despite the fact that immense medical advances has been made to prevent, cure or reduce cancer, it still remains the boogeyman. To put it simply, cancer is a group of diseases that occurs when abnormal cells grow uncontrollably or it spreads out to the other parts of your body, such as throat, stomach, breast, prostate, and it can happen to anyone. As our body produces new cells, there's a potential that it might be cancerous. Although there are myths and misconceptions about what causes cancer, there is not one single cause. It is actually from a range of complex possibilities. This can be difficult to understand and make the road to recovery seem like a daunting and lonely one. In Sarawak, it doesn't have to be. Arif is with Dr. Hadi, a clinical oncologist at the Sarawak General Hospital. Hi, Dr. Hadi. Hey, hi, Arif. Very good, I'm good. Good morning. Let's get into it. We're going to talk about cancer today. 2022, it's reported about 50,000 cancer cases. Your thoughts on this, Dr. Hadi? Definitely, the number is increasing if you look into the National Cancer Registry 2011, 2016, and they expect the number to be doubled by 2040. Cancer cases is expected to double by 2040. Why so? I think I can put it as a two reasons why this thing happened. The first one, I would say, Malaysian people are more aware. Awareness, so they go, go to the hospital, get themselves checked, Screening, definitely when they detect it, you can detect it early, number of cases rising. Secondly, it's true, the number of cancer patients rising. And then I think it's just because of our lifestyle. About 70% of uh, cancer risk factor are associated with lifestyles. You mentioned early detection. How can we do this early detection? Malaysian government has come up with a very own guideline. Screening includes investigation, which includes blood investigation and also some imaging. If you feel something is not right, feel alarm, you can go to the hospital and let the doctor need to be examined, need to be checked. So early detection is equivalent to early diagnosis. If you catch it early, you can treat it early, 
as well, you can have a high cure rate for this type of patient. So maybe certain individual would feel something is wrong, maybe in their body or, or just like some symptoms that you mentioned just now, but it's not so common to think of it, oh, it could be cancer, maybe people disregard. How do we go about this? How can we change their mindset so that, ah, oh, this could be something that we need to go and check? Yeah, I think it's a very good question, Arif. If you have uh, symptoms, and they always think this is not something which is sinister. But in case, if the symptom persists, mm -hmm. if you have a lump and the lump is there, you need to go and seek a medical attention. You cannot be sitting on the lump for quite some time, even though uh, the lump is painless. And this is what cancer is all about. If we go into risk factor, there is no one single risk factor that we can blame that cause cancer. I always said this is a multifactorial. Multifactorial, it could be genetic factor and mm. it also could be from environmental factor. Speaking of, um, you mentioned family genetics, right? So, to be honest, my grandma was diagnosed with um, stomach cancer. So, am I categorized in category golongan high risk? That one is not belong to the high risk yet, Arif. High risk, it can be immediate family members, which is the first degree relatives, which is your father, your mom, and also your siblings. And some diseases are associated with uh, hereditary, for example, like breast cancer, ovarian cancer. So, it depends on the types of cancer as well that might be a bit more high risk because of a genetic factor. Genetic factor. Yes. Now that we've talked about the different types and the high risk uh, of cancer, what are the steps that we could do uh, in the case of when we have the early detection on cancer? First of all, you need to go for screening. Definitely, once they found out something is sinister, something is not right in your blood investigation, so respective departments will do a further investigation for you, Arif. After they did all the investigation mm. and proved to be cancer, they will refer to a cancer unit or radiotherapy and oncology unit. There are lots of other treatments available. Mm. Mm. You mentioned a lot of treatments available. Could you um, share with us what kind of treatments are available out there? In general, mm. there are few types of treatment available for cancer. One is surgery, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, mm. hormonal therapy, immunotherapy and radiotherapy. And all of these treatments are available in Sarawak Hospital. Mm. One more thing, just to add on, in our Sarawak General Hospital, we have clinical trials. Just to make it very simple, clinical trials is a research thing just to find out the new medicine have improved in terms of efficacy mm. and reduced its side effects as compared to the conventional chemotherapy or any other treatments. So developments of the new medication that we need to test in a very controlled uh, situation. Okay, okay. So uh, depending on um, the situation? Yep. Uh, depending on the situation, it depends on the types of cancer, depending on the stage of the cancer. Mm. Once you detect early, sometimes you do not need a further treatment rather than just a surgery. Talking about its price and accessibility, is it expensive and is it accessible to the public? For the treatment I mentioned earlier, most of them are available in government hospitals. In terms of the cost, uh, most of the treatment are actually being subsidized by the government and most of the patients just need to pay or bear with the cost with a very minimal amount. Speaking about treatments, right? Are there any traditional medicine sort of treatment available out there? I think it's a very good question. A lot of people will ask these questions. Should I go a traditional medicine? Should I go for conventional or alternative medicines rather than to go like a Western medicine as mm. we call it now? As a doctor, I always advise my patient because this traditional medication or traditional medicine, it is not work as a primary treatment. They work as to support uh, the cancer treatment that we give the patient. Are there differences between private and also uh, public hospital services in terms of cancer? In general, in Sarawak, we have few places which we can offer cancer treatment. Public hospital, definitely, there's a few public hospitals which are located in the big cities and we also have in the private sectors as well. 
Generally, in terms of the treatment, there's not much things different because the principles of treatment is the same. Well, hearing all this, huh, Dr. Hadi, it's quite reassuring, right? So definitely an individual is diagnosed with cancer. It's not the end of the world. Definitely not. How can we manage expectations for patients that is going through cancer recovery process? So but my advice is to the patient, you need to trust your healthcare experts. In this context, definitely the doctor. Doctor will explain to you in detail regarding your diagnosis of the cancer, what stage you are. Then definitely they will tell you what are the nature, uh, cause of the treatment, what are the treatments available. So trust your doctor in delivering treatment. Secondly, I would say definitely when you got cancer, you need to go for on treatment. That's why you need to have knowledge all about your cancer, knowledge in terms of the side effects, knowledge in terms of the what treatment you are. So you need to expect what you will be in. From this expectation, after you endure or you go through all the process, you will become experienced. Practice a healthy lifestyle, avoid smoking, avoid alcohol, healthcare professionals, especially doctors and others are willing to help you. Do seek treatment. We will help you towards the end of your journey. Awesome. <laughs>
equally positive charge by all this radiation and so right. forth. We are connecting back with nature and that's where the healing takes place. Mm. Right, mm. right, right. So how do patients diagnosed with cancer, how do they have that healthy mind and spirit? Very good question. Uh, as I said, first of all, you have to look at a very, as I said, very holistic lifestyle change. Yeah. And uh, in order to do this, the food you cannot run away, exercise you cannot run away, water you cannot run away, sleep you cannot run away, and then of course a very positive attitude, keep yourself motivated. Actually, I don't like the way using a fighting or buying cancer. Hmm. I use my favorite is dancing with cancer. Dancing with cancer, yeah. <laughs> cha cha, <with> yeah. <laughs> because when you have an image of dance, joy. Positive attitude. Cancer is not a death sentence. Even when you seemingly have no hope, seemingly cancer has ravaged your body and so forth, there's still hope. And right, right, a stress free right. life is very important as well. Right. So, um, basically, how to handle your emotions. Mm. Uh, because when we are in negative emotions, we are feeding ourselves, our body with a lot of negative energy. I'm feeding my body with more positive energy, and therefore it only helps to build up my immune system. Right. And it is crucial at this time of life where I am facing what they call life threatening sickness, family support is crucial. And also, Friends, just oh, want to know a bit on the community aspect of it. I find this cancer subgroup very fulfilling. Mm. Why? Because they give hope to people. Right, yeah. right. In uh, St. Joseph Cathedral, uh, we have two cancer support groups. So you can see, even with those people who come, you can see changes. Mm. Uh, so they learn now how to learn from my own sharing and also learn from their sharing as well how to have a very positive mindset. Basically, when you talk about the community support, uh, I'm looking at it from the horizontal aspect. There is a vertical dimension to it, huh? Yeah, vertical dimension is basically, I say, it's, uh, somehow rather life is not complete if we don't have a transcendence in our life. Basically, for many of us, we may not believe in a religion, but many of us have spirituality. There's always something bigger than us. True. We reach out to be open to whatever you call the person reaching down to us, then you find that I am on a very safe ground, mm -hmm. support ground and so forth. And one of my favorite phrases is, uh, I used to say, do whatever it takes to survive. Mm. And uh, I also jokingly tell my friends, when death is staring at me with great ferocity to live, there's no better motivator than death. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Father Larry, I really love your holistic approach. Uh, it's not one-dimensional, it's multi-dimensional. There are steps uh, for you to change your lifestyle. And even if it gets overwhelming, there is a support group and also the transcendent being that also could help you get through this experience. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> my health, my choice. Your health, your choice. My choice. Your health, your choice. Cancer treatment can have many side effects on us. And they vary from person to person, even if they're receiving the same kind of cancer treatment. We can support our bodies during cancer recovery with proper nutrition and exercise. Miss Sonia is a dietitian who specializes in nutrition for cancer patients. How long have you been a dietitian? Mm, I've been a dietitian since 2013. So, uh, how does nutrition and exercise go hand in hand uh, with medical cancer treatment? Mm, so, medical cancer treatment is a treatment that a patient receives, remove the cancer cell from spreading. So, that's mm. how nutrition and uh, exercise will go hand in hand to like improve the symptom that they are having from the treatment itself. For example, like the chemotherapeutic agent that is cytotoxic, it will make their nutritional status become very poor. The nutritional status that we look into is their body weight because mm. the study has shown 
found that when they lose body weight throughout the treatment, it increased their risk of death. So that's why it's important for the patient to like monitor their body weight by taking enough nutrients. How can a dietitian uh, do this interval when patient lose an appetite and what can you do to help? We will meet the patient first doing the diet assessment which include their body weight, their appetite, what is their environment, why are they not eating enough mm -hmm. and then looking at their diet history, uh, what they, are they taking for breakfast, lunch, dinner and then uh, that is how we like can see what we can modify from there. So is it because they are eating alone so we can like gather more friends and family to eat together mm -hmm. and is it because they have like still having the metallic taste of eating the food so we can like enhance modify the flavor of the food um, like mm, maybe adding lime lemon or mint um, mm. so that they can like still enjoy tasting the food so we can modify also the texture of the food moist food or also the temperature of the food we can give like frozen yogurt ice cream or even like just sip through a liquid food two hourly throughout the day so that they still can achieve like uh, eight to ten cup of fluid per day yeah so this also like I would like to show you uh, if they um, like don't have appetite right, right. we can always like um, give them um, to sip through the ice chips okay mm. ice chip you can like prepare um, 500 ml of uh, liquid with um, some nutrient dense uh, powder, mm -hmm. powder milk, okay, put it in the ice cube maker and then they can just sip it like every one hour to get the nutrient inside their bodies. Right. Yeah. So in the context of Sarawak, could you also share with us um, some cancer friendly food? So when people are asking advice about uh, choices of cancer friendly food um, that they can choose outside when they eat, is I like to uh, divide it into food, two food groups, which mm. is the carcinogen and the anti-carcinogen. Carcinogen is the substance that fosters the development of cancer. So example of this is the salted food where they mm. add certain food additive uh, like nitrosamine. This actually fosters the development of cancer. Anti-carcinogen food comes from plant-based diet mm. yeah, because it contains the pro-vitamin A, yeah. vitamin C, vitamin E, um, fiber and phytochemical elements. Right. Yes. Examples? Example of uh, rich in vitamin A are so like the carrot, spinach, vitamin C mostly from fruits, guava, bananas. You can take like maybe four servings in a day. So talking about maybe there's a public notion saying that oh I have I'll, I'll be starting to eat bland food. I'm I'm not going to eat my favorite food anymore after this, and 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 all that. So, what, do you have anything to say about that? The food advice is actually like the regular food or so, only that they need to cope with the symptoms that they will receive from the treatment. So that's why I come back again to the tips of how to cope with this symptom through diet is we modify the texture, modify the flavor, modify the temperature to suit with their taste bud or so on and the outcome is we want their nutritional status is in a mm. tip top yeah what would be your advice to the caregivers okay for caregivers i think they need to be like more sensitive to the needs of the patient it is best that they know what are their symptoms that they are having based on what treatment they are receiving so it's good that they get advice from um, from us like dietitian where we actually will show them what they can do um, if, uh, for specific symptom lah. even um, doing light exercise also this actually can help to stimulate their appetite to eat mm. so yeah uh, so it doesn't have to be like an intense exercise you imagine it could be uh, light exercises as well mm. the occupational therapist or the mm. physiotherapist they just do like a hand therapy for them like oh. a very like progressive muscle relaxation for them to do lah. I would want to ask um, about stress management ask them to practice the mindful mindfulness mm. where when you are eating then focus on eating maybe you can just voice it out i am eating i am putting the food in my mouth mm. i am chewing it so this is something like mindfulness so that they won't think too much of uh, other things so just focus on eating so focus on uh, the nutrition amazing thank you for sharing that thank you for having me here the road to beating cancer is not straightforward but routine blood tests can help detect early signs of the disease. It is recommended that we do yearly blood tests to consistently keep track of our overall health conditions. While blood tests cannot confirm whether we have cancer, 
they can help to detect signs and determine what further tests or procedures we may need. And once you've done your blood tests, it will only take a few days until you'll know the results. It's that simple. Cancer is not a death sentence. A healthy lifestyle could greatly increase the chance of preventing it. These days, with the advancement of technology and also information in the medical field, we do not have to fear the big C anymore. You do what's best for your health. Now remember, my health, my choice, your health, your choice.